Hello, hello. So today we are going to have a look on how to see changes in your BigQuery tables. We we'll use a functionality called time travel for this. So what we, will going, what we are going to do is we will look at the documentation first, then we take the pieces, apply them in our BigQuery SQL, and then go further to see how we can track changes with this. So if you're interested, follow me into the monitor. Let's go. As promised, we start with the documentation. So what I did here is I just typed in BigQuery time travel. Of course, if you know, you know what to look for, but uh, it's not super obvious. In this case, now you know it's BigQuery time travel and you see I already clicked on this. It's like access historical data using time travel in BigQuery. So that's uh, a lot of text for a very simple functionality. So if I click on this and let me, uh, let me move you a bit more into the middle and here there's a bit of an introduction, a bit of limitation, but what we are interested in is this part here. So you see it's selecting something from a table and this part is unknown to us for now, right? So we are saying, okay, for system time as of timestamp sub, current timestamps, current timestamp minus, it's not a minus, but it's a timestamp sub, so it's a minus, uh, interval one hour. So let's copy this and see what comes out of our query. So in this case, I will just copy this part here and I know already what I want to look for. So I have a table that says where I can say, okay, I would like to have the reporting date and I would like to have the sum of new orders from and this operative data schema, I say backend and I say orders. So in this case, if I say group, I say group, oof, I say group by one and then we say order by one desk to have reporting date, news reporting date on top. So if I now do this, you see the results already in here. It's like, okay, I have by the time of today, or by the time of yesterday, I have 13, 13 new orders. So where do I plug in this one now? So BigQuery was saying, documentation was saying after this, this part, and you see it's complaining because I have the semicolon behind. Now I can do this again and it does work. It does work, but nothing has changed because I haven't updated the table in the last hour. What I, on the other hand, did I updated the last the table in the last 24 hours? So if I now say, okay, current timestamp minus 24 hours, we hopefully see something else here. Ah, you see, look, for example, before we didn't have this the third of September. Now we do. So the news table update was basically doing this. Uh, cool part is I can not only go back 24 hours. I can go back up to seven days. So seven days, uh, I spare you the math, is uh, 167, 167 hours. And I'll press on this and now I see, so I've been, I've gone back seven days. Pretty neat. If I do want to do one hour more, I get an error saying, okay, it's not, doesn't exist anymore because BigQuery holds this data for seven days. And now, to say like, okay, I have this timestamp sub functionality, but what is the timestamp sub functionality actually doing? The functionality is actually doing the following. So I can just do this and then I see what happens here. So just a date comes out, right? So it's a date minus 167 hours. So instead of, instead of here coming up with a relative term, I can also say, I would like to see from the 1st of September and now this also works so it's pretty nice if you have like a specific date in mind and you don't want to hassle with like how many hours do I have to deduct and add to to come to your specific point in time that's quite nice and the next part is of course that we have to like there's a limitation on this right so the limitation is of course this only works if the table exists already and the table exists already for some time Meaning that um, if you create your tables in BigQuery, and that's BigQuery syntax sugar, if you do a create or replace your table, right, your table S, and then do your normal select, right? So select all from dot dot dot, then everything's fine. If you use common SQL, which is drop the table first, drop if exist table, and then say create create table s select so on and so on then the bigquery time functionality doesn't work anymore meaning that keep in mind uh, create or replace in any case looks much more nicer much nicer <laughs> so uh, if you use this 
uh, it won't work because BigQuery recreates the table. Otherwise, BigQuery replaces the table, which is uh, the same. Like for for most of the use cases, it's the same that you want to achieve there. So try to always go with like the create or replace. And that's the base functionality of this. And now we will see how we can how we can track changes with this. Now let's have a look on how we can do the comparison between between those tables. So meaning, let's just copy this for now into a new query. We say we start with a with clause. We say new data as and then we copy our SQL in here and we remove this part. So that's my news data set. I don't need this part as well. So I say except if I execute this, I see my most recent data. My most recent data and now I do a second with clause. I say let's say all data as and here we directly copy everything in here, also remove the order by and now what I would like to say is select all from let's also give the alias a proper name here, we say as new orders actually which <laughs> it's not a proper naming convention but we should just say it for now, it's like new new orders and here we have the old new orders don't, don't ever do this in production um, because proper naming convention is very important, but don't like for the for the sake of this we just keep it like this. Um, so meaning now I say mm, let's say I would like to have from a new data, I would love to left join from my old data, and then I say using reporting data in this case. And now I execute and I oh, yeah, doesn't work. So it doesn't work because I cannot use a time uh, a time travel table in the same context as I use my normal tables, right? So that's one of the big disadvantage. However, however, we are smart and that's why we can also do the following. We can we can wrap this into a temporary table, right? So now I can say create, uh, let's say create temp table. In this case, we still want to say all data as this. And we have to put a semicolon there. And now I don't need this specific clause anymore. I don't need this. I can directly go in here and if everything works fine, I can also say order by one desk, in this case it's the reporting date. I will see, hopefully, my change as you see is executing. Let me move you a bit into this and then we say view results. I go back to the results and you see like, I, okay, I don't have, I don't have data for, for the third, for the second, for the first obviously because I, I do have the ninth. Nevertheless, this table works, right? So we circumvented the, the rule that we cannot use the same table in, the, in, the, in like a historic table in the same query. So meaning that uh, temp tables are actually quite nice. Always keep in mind you have to finish the temp table creation with a semicolon and then start with the next, next part. Nevertheless, I still, like, I do see that things have changed things have not changed, things have not changed. Here I see changes because it doesn't look like the day wasn't full. But what I can do now is, in order to find my differences, I would just do where, I would just do a where clause here, saying where new, new orders is not equal old new orders. And with this, I have already, or can already see what has changed. Let's uh, uh, go back to the results again. And now I see, okay, so the 31st has changed. Then I see the 24th has changed. Now we have like, we had half the orders. Now we have twice the amount of orders, which doesn't look correct. Like this is something you definitely should speak to the IT about. Because uh, if they fill up the table and they change uh, fundamental data, then uh, this needs to be explained. Same here. So we lose one order or like we gained one order actually. Here we also gained four orders, two orders, but at least, at least we have some some time in between, meaning that this is just a couple of days. Of course, we spot the errors with this. And now, based on what we found, we can at least like investigate even more, right? Otherwise, you would never see that there has been a change. Of course, uh, this is the same with like every sort of dashboarding. You only see the most recent data, but with this, you are able to at least trace back some days. And it's a pretty nice feature if you if you consider like doing this, because now I can just do the same here by saying timestamp. So I would just say, the same as BigQuery had in the documentation. So let's say, let's move this mouse away, current 
timestamp, timestamp, and then timestamp sub, it would be, let's say, 24, oh, interval, 24 hour. And now I will see the changes compared to yesterday, which is quite nice. So I don't have to, that's the cool part, you don't have to, you don't have to make anything preparation because, because BigQuery has this by default. And now I see the changes here, right? So I still see that data has changed from, from yesterday to today, even old historic data. And that's basically it, and it's super nice. Uh, feel free to subscribe, like the channel. Um, if you like what you saw, if you don't know, uh, feel free to leave a comment or have any questions whatsoever. Um, thank you very much.